Hey everyone, and get ready to expand your academic English with this video on habitats in English. In this lesson, I will discuss the different types of habitats that exist on our planet, and on the screen you will see lots and lots of English vocabulary. This video is really useful for students studying geography, the environment, or for anyone looking to describe a location or region in English. Make sure to check out the huge word list in the description below and listen closely to my pronunciation. You're very welcome to my channel, Learning English Pro. While you're here, please do me a favor and help me grow my channel. If you like this video, why not share it with a few friends and get together and discuss the new English words you've learned. This will be a great way to practice and to boost your English vocabulary power. Okay, are you ready to begin learning some English? Let's begin with the title of this video, the word habitat, and let's look at some definitions. A simple definition we could use is the natural home or environment of an animal, plant or other organism. A more advanced definition would be the term habitat summarizes the array of resources physical and biological factors that are present in an area, such as to support the survival and reproduction of a particular species. Let's move on and take a look at some synonyms of habitat. We could use the terms local environment or local area as a good replacement for the word habitat. Another word is home, but think of this more as in your home city and not your house. And another word we have is territory. And this word imparts the ownership and relationship of the animal to the area. Other synonyms include domain, terrain, surroundings, locality, and natural environment. Now it's time to take a trip around the world and have a look at all the different habitats that exist on our beautiful planet. So first up, we're going to have a look at the habitat which we call desert. Deserts are areas that receive very little rainfall. In hot deserts, daytime temperatures can reach as high as 45 degrees Celsius with an annual rainfall of less than 25 centimeters. Although deserts are mostly considered hot places, some are very cold, like the Gobi Desert in China. Life which we commonly associate with deserts are cacti, camels, snakes, scorpions and lizards. Okay, it's time to move on to our next habitat. It is similar to deserts as there's not much life going on. Mountains. Tall mountains can be extremely cold. The temperature drops about half a degree Celsius every hundred meters you climb. Life which we commonly associate with mountain habitats are goats, sheep, yaks, snow leopards, and many types of grasses. And if you're looking for some more useful words to describe mountains, you should check out my English lesson on mountain geography. The link for that is on screen right now. Now it's time to grab your coat because we are going to a habitat we call tundra. It's also known as polar. This habitat can be found in the Arctic, which is in the north, or the Antarctic, which is in the south. Tundra regions, along with mountain terrain, are the coldest habitats on Earth. The lowest temperature ever recorded was in the Antarctic at minus 88 degrees Celsius. And tundra life includes polar bears, seals, penguins, walrus, and Arctic foxes. Let's move on to our next habitat. And it is grassland. Grasslands have few trees and are areas which are dominated by grass. 
There are two types of grassland. Tropical grassland or savanna, which is found in Africa or Australia. On screen, there are links for videos for Africa and Australia, covering the geography vocabulary for each of those regions. The other type of grassland is temperate grassland, and this can be found in Midwest USA, Eastern Europe or Russia. These are often called prairies or plains. Now it's time to move on to a really big habitat, aquatic habitats, and these can also be called water habitats. These habitats include rivers, lakes, seas, and oceans. And there are some very interesting ways we can distinguish these environments. Fresh water habitats. These are aquatic environments which have no salty water. And they can generally be found in rivers and streams, lakes and ponds. Let's take a look at some fresh water life. Frogs, lots of fish, ducks, and lots of different types of plants like water lilies. So that's fresh water habitats covered. The other type of water habitat is marine water habitats. And of course, these have salty or saline water. We find marine environments in the seas and oceans, and this habitat is the largest habitat on our planet. It certainly is very beautiful. Let's move on and have a look at marine water life. We have mammals like whales and dolphins, sharks, jellyfish, octopus and plants like seaweed, and of course thousands of species of fish. A really interesting aquatic habitat is an estuary. An estuary is a place where a river meets the sea or ocean. And here, saline water of the sea mixes with fresh water of rivers. Here we find crabs, oysters, worms and waterfowl. And we can't talk about aquatic habitats without talking about a coral reef. These are rock-like structures made from calcium carbonate by corals. Coral is a hard skeleton left behind by marine polyps that form large structures which provide habitat to a huge and diverse range of aquatic life. If this is your first time visiting my channel, this is Learning English Pro and my name is Jer. I'm narrating your lesson. Thanks for visiting. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with a friend. Moving on, our next habitat is forest habitats. Forests are large areas of the planet which are covered by trees and other plants. Forests cover about one third of our planet. And when it comes to forest habitats, they offer the greatest range of life in terms of plants and animals. So let's take a closer look at different types of forest habitats. And the first one we'll have a look at is tropical rainforest habitats. And these forests generally cover land near the equator. The equator is an imaginary line around the middle of the planet. The temperature of these forests range from 20 to 34 degrees Celsius. And these regions receive heavy rainfall throughout the year, with annual rainfall of more than 200 centimetres. There is lots and lots of life to be found here, like insects. And in some forests you can find primates like gorillas and monkeys. And you can also find some big cats like tigers. Unusual creatures like bats and plenty of plants and birds like the exotic parrot. Let's move north from the equator to our next habitat, which is the temperate forest. Now where on earth can we find temperate forests? We can find them mainly in the northern hemisphere. 
They can be found in places like Eastern North America, Northeast Asia, and Western and Central Europe. The temperature of these regions ranges from minus 30 to 30 degrees Celsius. The annual rainfall is about 150 centimeters. And there is a clear distinction between the summer and winter seasons. Let's take a look at some temperate forest life. We have famous trees like the oak, maple and elm and big cats like the mountain lion. And here we start to see deer. And we can also see animals like bears, eagles and beautiful birds like the owl. Let's move on to our final habitat for this video and we're going to the very north to what is called the boreal forests. Boreal is another word for northern and that's because these forests are located at the very north of our planet. In places like Scandinavia, Mongolia, Russia, northern Japan, Canada and China. In boreal forests the temperature can dip as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius and reach as high as 30 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look at some boreal forest life. This includes wolves, lynx cats, along with foxes, and birds like the woodpeckers. And boreal forests are famous for their evergreen trees. So everyone, that brings us to the end of this English lesson on habitats. I hope you learned lots about habitats and increased your English word power. Don't forget to check out the word list in the description. And coming up on screen are some video suggestions for you. Links for my social media are in the description. And don't forget to subscribe. You can do that here on this screen right now. That just leaves me to say I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks for looking at my video and remember, keep learning English like a pro.